my channel, I'm Deanna and you're watching Orchid D. Um, you'll have to excuse me, I'm still in my pyjamas, but I bought a few orchid supplies, so this is not an unboxing of orchids before you get too excited, but I did buy a whole bunch of supplies because um, of all the new vandas that I've gotten recently um, and I'd like to sort of change them into a better setup for myself. Um, so I bought this stuff from Orchid Den um, down in Gold Coast, which uh, is an online supplier, but they also supply at local orchid shows. Um, anyway, I've ordered from them for a long time. I've always been very, very happy with the quality of their products. Um, and so I thought I'd just show you the stuff that I got. Plus one little special thing for the end of the video. Um, so the first thing is I've bought a few of these port pots. So um, you can see that they're quite shallow, but wide in diameter, lots of good drainage there on these ones. Um, but I thought I'd try them out for a couple of reasons. So I have a couple of cat layers that are quite sort of sprawly with a single direction of growth. And I don't want to have to cut off too many back bulbs every time I repot. So I thought this might be a good alternative. Um, the other thing I was thinking of venturing into a little bit more is bulbophyllums. Um, and so I have one bulbophyllum at the moment, which is my um, Elizabeth Ann Ockleberry. Um, but I did find a few orchid nurseries recently who um, stock bulbophyllums and one of the main reasons I haven't bought them is because of how sprawly they are. They seem to work a little bit better mounted or in sources so I thought this was a reasonable sort of um, alternative to that sort of growing method. Uh, anyway, I just thought it would be good to have a few of these. And I've got some more Vanda pockets. So these baskets are apparently made of teak, um, which is quite a long hardwood. So I've got this heavy box here as well. So let's put this in here. I've got some more cocoa fibers. So this is the stuff that I line those baskets with. Very handy stuff. some wires to hang my baskets up with so I've got a few sizes so this must be about 20 centimeters I think it's a bit smaller this is about 15 centimeters, I would say. Must be all very well packaged. Um, so, I think we, I must have just gotten these two sizes. Okay, um, and the other thing is they're very affordably priced. Um, I can't remember what I got for them. There may be an invoice in here still, but yeah. They were extremely affordable. All right, so I have to open the other side. So I thought I'd just try this out. But this is um, the cat layer mix, which is very heavy. It's um, a mix of large bark and um, lava rock, scoria rock. Um, I wanted to use this for a couple of things. So my Vanda baskets, um, I have been filling them with the scoria rock. The problem is with the bigger baskets, it gets really, really heavy with the rocks. So I've used liquor and it's been okay, except that when I soak my vanders, all the liquor just um, floats to the top, which is really quite annoying and not that good for root stability and stuff. So I wanted something that stays um, down but isn't too heavy. So I thought I would try this mix. However, now thinking about it, it might have been a bit silly because the bark's going to float as well. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to use it for was that I'm going to be repotting my catacetums pretty soon. I've been putting it off for a little bit, but I thought for a few of them I wanted to try the PET method. So um, I'll provide a link of Stephen Van Camp and Lewis's 
site and he's been using this method with some success. Um, it's almost like a semi hydroponic sort of setup in conjunction with like a layered uh, medium setup. So there's inorganic stuff at the bottom, um, a coarser material in the middle and then um, a top layer of sphagnum. So I thought I'd try that for a few of them, not all of them. And I thought this would be pretty good for the middle layer. So yes. All right. So I've got two bags of this stuff. So I won't bother taking the other one out. But I wanted to open this with you guys. So this is a print. So guys, these are one of the collectible prints from Miss Orchid Girl. Um, so Danny hired an artist and she um, is releasing, I guess, in a sort of collectible way, um, prints of different orchids. And this is the Nelly Isla. I'm really glad she bought these out. Like if I had just found them in a shop, I probably would have bought them. I have been looking for like orchid related, I guess, prints, something to decorate. Um, my house with but I wanted them to be modern and to be honest most of the stuff that I found with like um, orchids on them have been a little bit old fashioned and I haven't been too impressed with the designs but this is beautiful I love the black background I had a choice of black or white so I may get a little variety as she releases some more out but it is absolutely beautiful. So the other thing is I really wanted to support Danny, I guess, um, because she is a valuable member of the YouTube Orchid community. I still watch her videos very regularly and I guess it's kind of broadened interest um, in orchid growing just through the wider or global community. So thank you. Danny, your channel Miss Orchid Girl I think is a really valuable um, education tool so uh, thank you for the inspiration for your contribution to um, the orchid community and yeah thank you for the print because it is really lovely um, and I can't wait to see what else you're going to bring out. So just one last little piece of news I wanted to share with you um, before the end of this video but if you remember, I showed you guys this Rhynchostylus gigantea um, spots bloom in my Orchids in Bloom video recently. And I ended up taking this little one to my recent Orchid Society meeting. Um, and I put it in the novice section and I was the only plant in the novice section. So by default, it won first place. Uh, it was odd because like last time I went, there were like 20 at least plants. Um, however, uh, in the species section, um, there were quite a few Vanders in bloom and there were about 10 other Rhynchostylus giganteas of all different colours, shapes, um, all in bloom currently in Brisbane, so that was quite the sight to see. Um, and they gave me feedback on my plant, which is what I really wanted. So the judges said that this is a really nice plant and that um, it's one that I should definitely um, take care of really well to grow to a bigger size and um, that the quality of the actual blooms themselves is really high the size and the shape of the flowers themselves is really good quality it's um it's a nice bloom the patterning was quite unique amongst them um, there were other spots there but i reckon my flower itself was one of the prettiest of the spots varieties um, and uh, the quality of the spike as well that um, the spaces were filled quite well and quite evenly um, so yeah um, if I can look after it and get some bigger spikes and fuller blooms and maybe multiple spikes then it's a definite keeper so that's great um, yeah I really like hearing what these judges um, think are award-worthy blooms I guess um, and yeah they had really good feedback about this um, but some of the spikes were like 
double the size of this so I probably couldn't compete in that section just yet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little unboxing video, um, unconventional unboxing and I want to thank Miss Orchid Girl for all she does for the Orchid community and us Orchid lovers out there. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more Orchid videos. Hope you guys have a great week and happy growing until I see you next time. Bye!